Every time I talk about particle physics, I get complaints. When I say this stuff is nonsense, people complain it's not nonsense. When I say it's not nonsense, people complain it's nonsense. But today's news is different. It's both nonsense and not nonsense at the same time, so everyone will have something to complain about. It'll be glorious. Let's have a look. This news is about a test that particle physicists have done with data from the Large Hadron Collider. They wanted to know whether the particles in their collisions play by the rules of quantum physics, whether they have quantum entanglement. Entanglement is a correlation between quantum particles that can be stronger than any correlation you can get without quantum effects. It's the smoking pun of quantum physics, so to speak. This test is nonsense because we have tested this thousands of times before. There was even a Nobel Prize for confirming that, yes, entanglement is real. And of course, you already know that the new test confirmed quantum physics because otherwise Fox News would have declared all of physics wrong. And yet it's not nonsense because none of these other experiments were done at such high energies as the Large Hadron Collider reaches. And doing the test at such high energies could reveal the origin of the randomness of quantum mechanics. That wasn't my idea, unfortunately. It came from Gerard Toft. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1999 together with Martinus Wertmann for his contributions to the development of the standard model. But before I tell you what he's been going on about for a few decades now, let me tell you what they did at CERN. The ATLAS collaboration at CERN tested quantum entanglement with pairs of particles, a top quark and an anti-top quark that can be created in proton collisions if the energy is high enough. Quarks have a spin and what you want to know is how strongly the spin of the top quark is correlated with its anti-top partner. The top quarks are good candidates because they're heavy and short-lived. And since they're short-lived, there isn't enough time for the correlations to be washed out. Out. The correlations get passed onto the particles that the top quarks decay into. They catch these decay products in the detectors and calculate what the spin must have been. They reconstruct the spin values of the original particles and quantify their correlation in a number they call d. If d is smaller than minus 1 over 3, then you have true quantum entanglement. And as you can see here, that's what they find indeed. All works as expected. Now, one way you can look at this result is that it's nothing new, boring, boring, boring. But I look at it as a test of an idea that's so underappreciated you've probably never heard of it. It's the idea from Gerard Tooft, who I mentioned earlier. He thinks that the randomness of quantum mechanics that we observe in the laboratory has an explanation. It comes from information that's hidden on very short distances in the so-called hidden variables. In tabletop experiments like those typically done for testing quantum physics, you can't see what's going on at very short distances. For that you need a big collider. That's why they built them, because high energies test short distances. No, it's not just because they like really big and expensive machines. At least I don't think so. Somewhat ironically, particle physicists themselves tend to be not excited about testing the foundations of quantum physics. Most of them probably think what Toft says is crazy. This is because of how their current theories work. They always assume that what happens on short distances is not relevant for what happens on longer distances. It's called the decoupling of scales. But a key feature of chaotic systems is that what happens on short distances doesn't stay on short distances, what with the butterfly effect and all. So I'm totally with Toft. Just because we haven't found an origin of quantum randomness in tabletop experiments at low energies doesn't mean we won't find one at high energies. And yes, that'd be an example of what's called a super deterministic theory. Now, let me be clear. It's not that Toft is saying you can see evidence for that at the Large Hadron Collider. It's that generally, if you look at shorter distances, 
you have better chances to find those hidden variables. That's why I think this test is not nonsense. To the contrary, it's one of the things that keeps me up at night that the guys at CERN are sitting on a breakthrough discovery in the data, but they don't know it because they haven't run the right data analysis. Or worse, they might actually have thrown the data away. The other thing that keeps me up at night is the squeaky hinge on our fireplace cover. But let me say a little bit more about Gerard Tolft's idea, because I'm afraid basically no one takes him seriously. And I understand why. His idea belongs to the realm of quantum foundations. But Tolft isn't a quantum foundations person. He's a particle physicist. He doesn't speak the right language. So the quantum foundations people don't get it. And the particle physicists don't get it either because they don't think quantum foundations matters. So no one cares. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the reasons I'm here on YouTube telling you about this. To draw attention to ideas I think haven't received the attention they deserve. No, I made this up. I'm just here to make jokes about particle physicists. Did you know I have a quantum mechanics course on Brilliant.org? It's a beginner's course that you can take without any background knowledge. It'll introduce you to topics such as interference, superpositions and entanglement, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And afterwards, you can continue learning more about your favorite topics in science, computer science or maths. All courses on Brilliant come with interactive visualizations and follow-up questions. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine, you'll get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.